Hey, what's up? This is Laidback Luke, DJ and producer today here with We Rave You as I'll take you into how I exactly made my new track with Rafi, Waiting For You. Showing you all the techniques, all the plugins, all the tips and all the tricks, literally everything going on in the track. So strap in, make yourself comfortable as we go on this little journey right here. So we're in the project right now, but before I'll show you anything that's going on in here, I want to talk to you about concepts because there's a concept to this track and I often work with concepts before starting a track and I'm so happy this track is out because in that era when I was making this track I had made a bootleg for Diplo and Miguel don't forget my love and it sounded a little bit like this don't forget my love When this worked so, so well in my sets, even Diplo himself has been playing it out from the moment he got it up until now. And the frustrating part is that it never officially came out. And so I was sitting on this track that was working so well for my dance floors and nothing happened. So then Rafi sent me this demo that she did on a writing session or a writer's camp somewhere. Did you know that I'll be waiting for you? Cause I'm waiting for you. When the drop hits, I didn't really want to go there, so... It's a proper, proper demo. It sounds absolutely amazing, but I didn't want to go that route, especially after making such a powerful bootleg. So I figured the concept is that Diplo and Miguel bootleg meets this demo, Take the best parts out of the vocal and here we go waiting for you the concept was born now let's dive into the production side of things the kick drum is a noisy kick drum off of splice amazing kick drums amazing pack i told him in his face i've been using this kick drum for a multitude of tracks and it's just a solid one Did some attenuations in terms of EQ so it would fit my track and bass line. Some automation going on here in the EQs, taking out the bass EQ right here and then putting it back in. Here's where the frequency automates. A bit more of that attenuation here and a bit more. How about that? So you'll see me working with tons of EQs stacked after one another in my arrangement. And I love working that way because how I see this is that when I have a sound, and I EQ it, it's kind of like set in stone for me. Yes, you could take away the EQ or yes, you could alter that set EQ. But when I'm happy with it, I'll move on and I'll produce. But then I'll come back to it and think, oh, it could use a little bit of this. So the next EQ I put on there, I see as a blank slate, as a blank canvas. The sound that I was happy with and that I had is just set. And then I'll alter, do something new with it with a new EQ. And so this continues on whenever I, the arrangement progresses. And I hear the EQ police yelling at me already because there's chance of phasing issues if you stack EQs like that. If you don't want phasing issues, you could use the Ableton EQ as a linear EQ, a linear phase EQ using the oversampling function. I often do that on mastering or if I think at a certain point, oh, I'm hearing some type of phasing issues, I'll just go ahead and chuck on the oversampling. Let's move on to the bass line. For the bass line, and you'll see this in my project as well, I'm, I'm kind of old school. For the bass line, I thought, you know, let's grab back to Massive. I know exactly how Serum works. I love working in Serum, but for some chunkier and old school sounding bass lines, I love using the presets in Massive. Let me pull up the Massive synth real quick so you can see that Serum Ancestor. It's this one, the old Massive synth. And I just really like browsing through the presets. So all the bass and all of these sounds. Massive is actually the synth that uh, Skrillex became famous with. Ton of legacy here and tons of awesome sounds. Obviously you could easily remake this in Serum, right? It's not the most insane bass line ever. I added a sub layer in there and my subs, I like taking them from Silent 
another sort of old school synth, right? And the preset that I love using most for that is this one, the, the deep sub bass, which is in the third tab. It's just a solid sine wave right here. And by varying the release and the sustain, you get such a neutral but chunky type of underlayer for your bass lines. So this one sounds like this. Very subby. And then the whole trick was, and I wrestled with this a lot, is was to fit it with the kick drum. So we have the kick bass group right here. And all of that sits really nicely right now. And my main secret weapon for that, well, let's look at the plugins on the bass group first, right? Fab filter satin, just doing a little bit of saturizing in the 40 hertz to 170 hertz range. Then a little bit of multi-band taming right here. It's actually just barely tickling the signal. How about that? Use Ableton's auto filter to just take out the harsh frequencies. I didn't really want this bass to sit in the mids because all the bleeps are in the mids. And this is interesting. A very simple trick. Kick masking. The simple way to explain masking EQ is that it's a stationary sidechain where you take the EQ signal of your main signal, so in this case the kick, and then you EQ it the other way around, putting it on the channel you want it to mask on. So this originally, look, the scale is minus 38% here. This one used to look like this. On the kick channel, these were the frequencies that were sticking out in the kick. And so now I copied this and I put this on the baseline channel and I scaled it back so it would take away these signals. And so the kick can pierce through much better this way. And then I have the SSL EQ on here, which I love still. Adding a little bit of low frequency here on a 94 hertz and a tiny little bit of mid. And what I love about the SSL EQ is that whenever you add frequencies, it also adds a little bit of harmonics and a little bit of warmth somehow. So it's a real nice sort of vintage finish that you have on your signal. And then my real key to making that kick really pierce through is Track Spacer and specifically Track Spacer 2.5 where I put the kick as a side chain into the signal. And so we're listening to the bass group right now. And this is the kick piercing through. Let me turn this off. This is without. This is with the kick coming through. And it's not a regular sidechain because it sidechains the frequencies of the signal. Whereas a regular sidechain only affects the main volume of the signal. All right, so that's squared away. Let's listen out to the main sound of this track, which is the main bleep, which is this one. Oh, it just makes me so happy listening to these sounds. This is the original Dutch house type of bleep. And I need to explain you something about my DNA in producing. I started producing back in 1992. So I'm a, an old school producer. I've been producing for over 30 years now. And how we would do it in the 90s is mainly not sound design, mainly sampling everything. Everything that we could sample, we would sample. One of the biggest examples for that is 90s hip hop. Everything in 90s hip hop is sampled. Kicks, snares, hats, sounds. And I used to love sampling so much, way more than doing sound design. I know sound design, I've studied FM, I know how sounds work, but me personally with my producer DNA, I just love taking fragments from here and there. So this is all padding to say I didn't actually make this bleepy sound. I sampled it. And you see here, bleep Christine. And that's all I'm gonna say about it, bleep Christine. If you know where I sampled this from, make sure to leave it down in the comments below. But it's a little short snippet of a sample and I put a ton of plugins on there. For instance, Little Alter Boy, just giving it a little bit of format in quantized mode just to affect the sound a little. And this plugin by Isotopy, I love a Nectar plugin and especially for the harmonic engine that's in there. And what the harmonic engine does, it gives instances of the sound where you can put them in space, 
and alter the stereo image. It'll give it a little bit of time variation and pitch variation and it just makes it sound a little bit spacier and there's just something going on there that's more than just the sampled signal. A little bit of fab filter saturations in the mid highs and the high ends. And then there's a bunch of reverbs I'm working with. A longer reverb here. And look, this is just a very, very subtle 1.6%. And a shorter reverb, which I automate here, dry wet signal. And you'll see it here throughout the track. It's just a bit of automation going on. The wider plugin by Infected Mushroom and Polyverse has become a favorite, making the stereo image even a little bit wider than just using Nectar. Just some auto filter to take out the harsh frequencies. And then here's some automation in between. It's just all stock Ableton plugins going on, right? Apart from the Fab Filter Q3, where I'm taking out, out a little bit of the harsh frequencies in the sample. And these are dynamic EQs, which means every time this harsh frequency hits, it'll get punched downwards. And immediately, only when it hits, will it trigger the EQ. Literally only there it starts working. So I have two track spacers on this channel. One is for sidechaining through the vocal group. So whenever the bleep is going on and the bleeps is loud in the mix, but whenever Rafi sings, it'll use the track spacer to duck from that vocal signal, which comes in very handy. So the ear will still think both mid frequencies because they're competing in the same frequency realm. Both of them come through really loud, but the main focus in that case will be the vocal and it will just duck the bleep away in those areas. Same goes for kick and bass, using a track spacer for there as well. Let's have a look at the toms really quick because I really like what the toms do when it comes to the shuffle of the track. And I'll, I'll get to the shuffle of the track as well. But when you hear the kick and bass, and then we add the toms as a, an extra percussion shuffle. Gives it a little bit of a tribal feel and makes you want to dance. Makes me want to dance. But what I wanted to say about the, the shuffle that's in there, and this is an old 90s saying as well, because this type of shuffle came from the old Akai MPC players, which had a specific shuffle in there, a 16T shuffle. And that's what I have throughout the track. And you see it here in the piano roll in my quantize settings. The quantize is 16 and I like using that. Everything becomes funky then. Got to give a quick shout out to Matt Nash for the DST plugin, which I recently upgraded my computer and I need to put in my license key again. DST for distortion, a little bit of a saturator, works really nicely. Used it quite a few times and obviously it before I rendered the master, this one was on there. And do note that I have two track spacers on here where they could be one. One for the kick and one for the bass group, but I could have totally done the kick bass group. Hindsight. And then what the toms do with the auto pan here is that they go, they have a little bit of a stereo alternating going on. Let's exaggerate this amount so you can hear it. So that's what they're doing, right? Time for some synths, not many, many actual synths in this track, but I do want to give a shout out to one of my favorite synthesizers, the Anna 2 by Sonic Academy. For some reason, I always gravitate towards this and, and look, there's a new version detected, but I'll just press remind me later because we're right in the middle of something, right? But for some reason, I love the layout. I lo love working with all the presets, proper presets. And whenever I need to tweak something, it's just very simply there and it's just a very hands-on type of synth for me. Now what this thing does is just doing the organ lead in the track. Which I don't know if you know that about me but I've been playing piano for a long long time so I just grabbed these type of chords that I thought fit really well in the vocals from Rafi's original demo that I wanted to use. And then we have an organ extra in here. Which is from the M1, the Korg M1 synth, which is one of my all time favorites still. Nothing much going on other than doing the same trick again with track spacer, having the vocal come in as the sidechain signal. Some strings here, just very simply a, a one note type of string. Very old school housey type of deal going on there. Also 
Quark M1. As we slowly, I guess, uh, go into some effects, there's seagulls in here. For some reason, I wanted a beach type of vibe where it was like a reminiscence of good times and you were actually waiting for that person. Person broke your heart. This is what the lyrics are about. And the seagulls are right in here. I just put a little bit of Ableton reverb on there, but it's in the breakdown. How many songs did we just miss? How many shots we didn't drink? How many times we could? Now you know. But before we dive into more effects, let's have a look at the vocal. Typically nothing really special going on here because what I love doing is I'll ask the singers for the full acapella and I often don't even want them dry or unprocessed. I really want the singers to be able to hand me the vocals the way they wanted them to be. The way they wanted them to be compressed, what type of effect they wanted to have on there. Even EQ, although you'll see me altering the EQ right here. I tend to just like working with the full audio files of the vocal. So in this case as well, it's the full group. And the SSL EQ here is just giving it some warmth. Bit of reverb automation here. I got a, a 4 fourth delay going on but keeping it subtle with the dry wet and so this whole thing activates in the drop so in the drop I'm, I'm really cutting the low ends off and I have another dynamic EQ going on here that I don't want to have out in the drop ooh, ooh, I'm waiting for yeah that's the, probably that big ooh, ooh, that needs to not have a peak there ooh, ooh, I'm waiting for you how many songs do we just miss I'm and so this is in the breakdown and I want the vocal to be fuller in EQs because there's no beats in there per se. And in the end, I'll do a little bit more of dynamic EQ, just some touches here and there. And this is then the main vocal group. Again, I'm using the EQs to, as a new palette figured in the overall group EQ, it could use less on the lower end and I even go as far as 500 hertz to just take the, the, the bottom off of things. And I do want you to realize and see this. Soothe, clean up a little vocal harshness preset. There you go. The vocal was a little bit harsh overall. Soothe will do some magic there. Ooh, I'm waiting for you. It's super subtle, but super noticeable as well. Interesting, right? So I want you to see this, this uh, Pro L limiter, and I'm specifically not using the L2 for this one. It's just a little bit of an end limiter that I tend to do at the end of my channels as a peak reduction. Ooh, I'm waiting for you. So you already saw here. Here it goes, that little peaky. It'll catch certain peaks. I'm aiming for a gain reduction of minus two dBs. And I tend to do that specifically on the channels that I don't want to clip. As I'll tell you more about mixing and mastering of this track towards the end, I tend to put clippers on my individual channel before mastering to give me a little bit of extra decibels towards the end. And when it comes to vocals, instead of clipping, I'll just put a simple limiter on there, aim for a minus two dB of gain reduction. And this Pro L is perfect for that. Whatever gain I give it here, I take the gain out in the output so it equalizes itself. Backing vocals, not too much going on there other than a little bit of side chaining here as well. And the backing vocals don't need that much high end. So I rolled it off with a little auto filter. As we scroll up, Looking at a little Hall Kick sample here, probably plucked this one off of Splice. This is a Vengeance. Who remembers Vengeance Essentials? A Vengeance Crash. Oh, and so for the people that don't know what a Hall Kick is, that's a Hall Kick. Kick drum with a lot of reverb, essentially. And then before I go into the mastering part of this, which which I love, mastering is my hobby. Let's just quickly dive into the claps and the hi-hats. I have a bunch of top loops in there that I want you to see. Here's my clap, which is just a, a sample from the Vengeance Essential Kits again. A little bit of SSL EQ working here. Note taking out the, the high-end frequencies a lot. I've added a little bit of a wider plug in there as well. So this span is just for me to then double check the stereo with if everything goes okay with me actually adding stereo to an already stereo signal, right? But that's looking great. 
and then just taking out the frequencies I really don't need in the mix, which accumulates to this. <laughs> That's all the clap needs in this track. Top loops. I, I gotta give a shout out to Matroda because I took this top loop off of a bootleg that he made of a Bad Bunny track. So that's going on in the background. Just a subtle hi-hat that is a hi-hat shuffle for me. Again, there's the 16T quantize going on, which sounds like this. And just an open hi-hat. I tried all of these types of plugins in here. You know what, I'll go ahead and delete this. An EQ that didn't work out. A little bit of a vocoder to add some noise in there. And in the end, I didn't want noise in there, so I kept it clean. This one wasn't working either. This might be interesting. The Ableton EQ in mid-side mode, which now we are looking at side signals. I EQ'd the side signal of this hat like this and the mid frequencies like this. In the end, I went for some pretty wild gain reduction on the, the harsh peaks. Figured I wouldn't put a soothe on just a hi-hat because it's literally this hi-hat. <laughs> but in the mix, it all makes sense, right? Yeah, it sticks out nicely without it poking you in the air, so to say. And so that's pretty much the whole track before mixing and mastering. Let's dive into mixing and mastering then right now. And when it comes to mixing and mastering, I love having mastering references at hand. Tracks that already are out, that are already mastered. Titles of tracks that I know work well everywhere. So let's have a look at this group. And my mastering references for this one is SL Bubblegum, shout out, Own Boss, Move Your Body, the Maddo remix of my track uh, Flexing with Eva Simmons, which is an awesome master. Maddo is proper when it comes to mastering. Could You Be The One, my own master, which that low end really works for my dance floors, sits really nice and tightly. And just to being able to level everything out the way I want it, actually have my bootleg of Diplo and Miguel in here as well. And so what I love doing and what I still do is having a pre-master. The pre-master is just a random audio signal, but I'll root all of my elements, the kick bass, the synths, the hats, the effects and everything into the pre-master. And what the pre-master does for me is keep my master channel completely empty. All of my master references go straight through the master so they won't have any signal on them. And then my pre-master goes to the master as well, but on my pre-master, I'll have all my mastering plugins. This way I can go easily back and forth with the professional tracks, with the references, without them being affected by my mastering chain. Let's hear the before. <laughs> So it's in the red now because there's no limiter on here, right? That's just the clean signal. And this is after. I love how it's a little bit louder and doesn't go in the red. So on all of the channels that I thought were peaking out, I either put a limiter on there with a minus one, minus two gain reduction or a clipper in there with the same type of gain reduction. And my favorite clipper is this one. An oldie but goldie, it's the T-Rex classic clipper, which works amazingly well. Has a nice warm type of sound, solid reduction, very little CPU. I love using this. And so then the signal that comes in, the first thing I'll do is add another limiter straight away. And this limiter, this will give me a little bit of a gain reduction as well. I'm usually aiming for about just one dB here as well. See that? It just catches those peaks that could like throw your whole master chain off guard. Then I have a mastering compressor on here, the SPL Iron, which I love. It's super silky, super smooth. And over here as well, I'm just looking for a minus one, not even minus two, just a minus one. <laughs> So in this stage, I'm always looking for gain reduction, gain reduction, gain reduction, because then at the end you can turn it up and reach the levels you want. Multi-band compressor here, linear phase one by Waves, classic. Just make sure it tickles the signal. 
Then I have my stereo with combo here, which is the Fab Filter Pro C2 compressor, giving my side signals a little bit of a gain reduction. Those sides also get saturated as well with the black box analog design plugin, just a side signal. So you get a really nice and juicy stereo width going on in your ears while the mid signal is unaffected, right? Some peaks taken out here, and I like searching for these peaks with the little headphone function for the Ableton EQ. This horrible peak I took out. This little mud as well. Obviously with the big mud here. And then over these last two years, one and a half years, I've been using the Ozone 9 Mastering Assistant to give me a sort of like a ballpark where I would need to go with this master or where I would want to go with this master. And so I've plugged in Ohm Boss, Move Your Body, it rendered and it gave me a result. And usually that result actually isn't super on point. I love using my ears afterwards. And so you see, this is not my end station. After this, there's EQing, dynamic EQing. Note the linear phase setting here. And wait, so this is all bass sculpting, right? Crazy. Some overall and global EQ going on. And look at here. We do have the oversampling on right now. Plenty of multiband going on. A little bit more on the low end, a very elaborate multi-band going on, a little bit more sculpting here. And mind you, I go, I go through tons of masters. This must have been, the end master must have been version 11 or something, right? And note this little A that's, uh, that's on here, which means it'll keep the signal, the volume of the overall signal the same. So you can, you can push the EQs up and everything, but it'll never go across the board. So whenever you put an EQ up and you don't really hear anything happening, then you're in the wrong area. And so it comes in really handy to fatten up a sound. Some rigid multiband going on here, trying to get some punch within the 90 to 180 Hertz range. I, <laughs> And I'm laughing, right? I then compared it to Dom Dollar and I wasn't happy with that. So I added another SSL EQ and another EQ. And then finally, 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 look at this one. This one is wild. Plenty of sculpting going on, but also note the sides being EQ'd here. This is in the air band type of range where it's a 13 kilohertz and above. This one is a dynamic one in the high ends as well. So there's plenty of professor stuff going on in the mastering realms. And then finally, I'll end with a FabFilter Pro L2 limiter in transparent mode, giving it a little bit of a gain, oversampling on two times, dithering 24 bits because I render my masters in 24 bits, and then make sure the output is a minus zero point 3 dB because if you render out an mp3 it'll not be true peak not actually be true peak because of the conversion it'll come with a little bit of a distortion and this minus 0.3 decibels reduction will catch those peaks of distortion and so you'll always be in the clear and then with my little ulean meter I'll always aim for a minus 7 <laughs> That's been a good ballpark for me to aim for minus seven. And then towards the very end span, just making sure all the frequencies look right. The stereo image looks right as well. And there it is, the full, full breakdown of this track. And now you get the chance to officially remix my track. Get your hands on all the stems, because my label Mix Mash Records is doing a remix competition together with LabelRadar.com to give you this opportunity. So make sure to check the description down below. Start officially remixing my new track. And I'm very curious to hear what you will do to it. Hopefully you enjoyed the way I work. And all of the EQs are crazy, right? Hopefully you picked up something new here. Hopefully you learn something do make sure you like this video as well do it for we rave you if you love we rave you and and leave things down in the comments i'll be looking at them as well and i'm curious to hear your thoughts and and make sure you stream my track laid back luke and rafi waiting for you we rave you thank you very much for having me